Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, where we cover all things Swift and Swift UI related, and now Firebase, if you're using that in an iOS project. Uh, but a couple of videos back, I introduced you guys to your new best friend, Firebase Crashlytics. Actually, you have two new best friends. Your other one is Analytics. And the Analytics is now jealous that you have the Crashlytics as your best friend. But fortunately, these two friends work very well together. The Crashlytics console will actually show some of the analytics that are happening when that crash is happening, which is really cool. Uh, so that's what we're going to jump into today. We're going to look at the analytics product within the Firebase SDK. And just like the last two videos, Crashlytics and Performance, the analytics functions are relatively simple and the code is very, very similar. Basically, I'm just going to set up a manager class and we're going to look at how we can trigger these analytics and then a little bit how we can customize these analytics. Because sometimes when we're sending these analytics, we want to send additional data in that payload just so that we know ex the exact environment when this was triggered. We're going to wrap up this video very briefly looking at the actual console. So not necessarily writing code, but how we can actually analyze some of the analytics that have come through the console. There is a whole school of thought uh, to understanding and analyzing data and analytics. And so I'm not doing like a deep dive into how to read analytics in this playlist, but I think at a high level, uh, a lot of what we want, at least as the developer, will be covered in these simple dashboards. Analytics are basically a requirement uh, in any app that you're building, because if you don't have analytics, you really don't have any idea what's happening in your app, right? You might be able to see installs and maybe subscriptions, but it's very hard to tell if users are liking a feature unless you have analytics around that feature. So whether or not you're using Firebase Analytics is less important than just understanding how to actually start logging and tracking analytics in your applications. All right, welcome back everybody. I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and today we're gonna to talk about Google Analytics or Firebase Analytics, which are basically two in the same. Let's jump on to the Firebase console here, and we are making our way down all of these different products they have, and we're gonna to go to the Analytics tab now for the first time. I'm gonna jump into the dashboard here. So we're gonna go through some very basic implementation of the Analytics product, but we are not gonna take an extremely deep dive because at a base level, analytics are pretty self-explanatory, right? You, you trigger events, and then you get to analyze those events. But then at a deep level, there's an entire school of thought around analytics and how to monitor and how to read the analytics. And that would require like an entire playlist in itself. So we're just gonna take a very intro level view to the analytics product in this video. We can see here that in my project, the analytics are actually already connected. If you've been following along, they're probably already connected to your project as well. When you set up Firebase for the very first time, which we did in the first video in this playlist, it asked us if we want to use Google Analytics and we clicked yes, and I think by default it is yes. And that's why we can already see some events in the console. Now the events that are here are the very basic events. So there's some, looks like some page views that it's monitoring. First app open is like a default event that's probably being triggered based on our app delegate. And then there's some very basic stuff here. What we're gonna now do is add a bunch of our own analytics and then check out the console again. All right, so in the documentation, and we're not gonna read through all of it, but there's a good video here on just an overview of what analytics are, how they work. We can see here that we can send up to 500 distinct events to our console. That's a lot of events. And then there's some more info here. So unlimited reporting, this is pretty big. When you look at purchasing analytics tools, they can get very expensive very fast. I mean, you could imagine if you have 100,000 users in your app and every user is sending 100 events, that's a lot of analytics. And some tools charge you per event that you send, and then other tools might charge you per monthly active user, but it really does range on the product. So the fact that we can send here 500 events unlimited times, that's very cost effective, we'll say that. There are pros and cons of any tool. Google Analytics is definitely not my favorite analytics tool. There are some that I would say more robust in actually analyzing data. If you really wanna get into like the deep 
funnels and conversions of your analytics. There are other products out there. I would mention Mixpanel is one of my favorite ones, but those products are significantly more expensive than Google Analytics. So if you're just a startup or you're just you know putting out your MVP and, and you're not gonna be spending every second of every day in your analytics, like monitoring the smallest things, then this is probably a great place to start and then maybe if it's not enough for you, you can upgrade later. But on that note, one of the, I think, negatives of Google Firebase is that they have audience segmentation. So they, they're pitching this as a positive. So basically all of your users can send analytics and then you can group those users into audiences based on user properties. So you could say all of the users that are in this A-B test, all of the users that are in this country, or using this device and things like that. And you can create a very specific segment and then look at the analytics for users in that group. And so that's good and that sounds at a high level really good. But the flip side of this, which they obviously don't mention here, is that there is no user segmentation in Google Firebase. So you can't actually just go into a specific user and see what analytics that user has triggered. So other products out there allow you to do that and every user has their own profile and you can go and see every event in order that this user triggered and oftentimes that's really powerful especially if like you're trying to dive into what is this user doing or what happened at this specific time so google firebase does not have that but they have the audience segmentation which i'm not sure why they made that decision i'm sure there's some technical reason why this they think it might be better or safer for the user but it's just something that's important to point out anyway i'm not gonna go through all of the docs here but i will note that the analytics are automatically integrated with other services which is amazing so earlier in this course we looked at crashlytics and in crashlytics you can send some logs behind your crashes so you can see what's happening in your app when the crashes happen and so if you're using Google Analytics and Google Crashlytics, it will automatically connect those two things so that you can see what analytics are triggering when the Crashlytics are happening, which is great. We're gonna go to get started here and I'm gonna start moving a little bit faster. We wanna add Firebase to our project. We obviously already done that. Add the add support framework if you wanna enable extra features. So super simple setup here, it says add Firebase to your project and then recommended add add support framework to your project as well for some additional features like audiences and campaign attrib attribution. We're gonna do that. I don't think we're gonna actually use it, but we might as well just add it. So we add the package, import the Google Firebase SDK, which we already have in our app, add the analytics library, and then very simply start logging events. So before we move forward, let's actually get that done in our app. So I'm gonna jump into Xcode here, I'm gonna create a new folder for the code we're gonna write in this video. Let's call it analytics. Move it to the bottom here. I'm gonna move it to the bottom underneath the performance that we just did. Let's jump to the project navigator. Let's go to the framework section here and let's add the rest of those Firebase packages. We're gonna look for analytics and we're also gonna add analytics Swift so we get some of the extra little Swift functions in there. Let's click add. They should appear right here, already there. And let's also go ahead and add the add support framework that the docs that the doc said to add. So let's add that in here. Cool. All right, let's go to the analytics folder here. Let's right click new file. And I'm just gonna call this one Swift UI view analytics view. Let's click create. We're gonna keep this super simple because you guys will figure out how to add it to your own projects on your own time. But for right now, let's get this started by creating a manager class like we've done for all the other products. I'm gonna create a final class, call it analytics manager. Open the brackets, analytics manager. Let's create a singleton, static let shared equals analytics manager. I will note one final time that I am not a fan of singletons, but I'm doing it in this series because there's so much code we have to write. Private init, open and close brackets, and then let's write some functions. I've gone through the docs already, so I'm not gonna go through them with you. There's some very simple functions that we need to add here. Firstly is gonna be a function called log event. 
This is your basic trigger an event to Google Analytics. We're going to call Analytics. We should actually import Firebase Analytics as well as import Firebase Analytics Swift. We're going to call analytics.log event. It's that simple. We're just going to send an event to Firebase Analytics and we can optionally add some parameters to that event. So we're just going to create a function to handle that. Let's call this name of type string as well as params for parameters, which will be a dictionary with keys of strings, value of any. We'll set it equal to nil to start just like, just in case we don't ever have parameters. We'll pass these in here. In the analytics, just like in the crashlytics, we also want to set the user ID. So we're going to do a func set user ID, and then we'll pass in a UID of type string. And we'll pass in a user ID of type string and we'll call analytics set user ID and we'll pass it in. Again, there are no user profiles in analytics, but it will use this to at least create audiences and determine what is the user profile of the user that triggered that analytic. Lastly, we are gonna do a func set user property. So these are the properties that are then related to the user. So a property might be like is subscribed or maybe their country, or maybe some A-B test they're in, things like that. We're gonna set a user property, and we're gonna call it analytics, set user property, and of course, we need to pass in a value of type string, we'll make it optional, as well as a, we'll call this the property name, property of type string. And we'll pass this in. And I think this is optional because after you set it, you can set it back to nil at any time, and that's why the value is optional. Cool. And before we actually write the, the final code here, let's just take one more quick look into the docs real quick, just to go over some stuff together. In the analytics docs, we have this tab log events. So very simply, you call log event and then you pass in the event name and some parameters. And what they're showing us here though is a very specific event name and the event parameter. So the way we wrote our function, we can add any string as an event name. But there are some events that are basically like built into analytics that if you're using those events, they want you to use these specific strings basically. And so if we click here, learn more about these events, I'm going to go down here and then it says recommended events and I'll open that up. So these are the recommended events that Google is telling us to add. So basically for all properties, I mean, I think this is just like general apps. These are the basic events that they want you to add. And I think all of these are built into the SDK. So for example, sign up. If I go into the analytics here and I start typing in analytics, sign up, there's an analytics event for basically everything that we're seeing on that other screen here. So if you are using any of the recommended events, instead of typing your own string, they want you to use their recommended, they want you to use their recommended events. And that's because it's gonna come through the analytics dashboards a little bit different because it will have like preset charts and stuff for you. You don't obviously don't have to do it, but if you do, you basically just add the, that event as a string rather than passing in an actual string. We're not gonna do that right now. Just wanna let you guys know that that is there. There are a bunch of basic properties that that are applicable to most apps. There are these properties which are applicable to online sales, which is probably less common for app development, unless obviously you're making a some sort of sales product. And then there's games, which we are not building a game right now, but tutorial begin, tutorial complete. You could honestly use these for like your onboarding as well. But again, you don't have to use them, but Google's given them recommended, so you might as well. Moving down here, we can also pass in our own strings, of course. And then we can also add some debugging, set user properties. You can set up to 25 different user properties. So this is important that you don't set too many things because obviously you're limited to 25. So pick the 25 user properties that actually matter. These should be things like age, gender, interest. Google is telling us that we can't use these exact keywords, but if you have categories, user is premium or like a power user or any sort of bucket that the user is in, I would add that as a user property. Again, you're gonna use user properties to help segment your users. And the reason for segmenting is so that when you get a chart, you can then filter on the, that subset of users and it should have some impact or help you make business decisions. 
So if your user property is not gonna actually have any impact on your business decisions, then you probably don't need it. And we already wrote the code to set a user property. Debug events, set user ID, and I think we are done in the code here. Let's jump back into Xcode. Let's write some analytics. Firstly, let's create a very simple screen and make a V stack, spacing of maybe 40. Open the brackets. Let's make a button, a button with a title. Give me the good completions here. Let's say click me. And in here, we're gonna trigger our first analytic. Let's call analytics manager shared. Let's call log event. And, and let's just pass in a name analytics view underscore button click. How you name your analytics is up to you. I try to do like the screen underscore and then like the object or the action that is happening. This just helps me in the console. I can then easily filter for all the analytics that are on a screen. I can just search for the name of the screen, but you do not have to do this. Do whatever works for your app. I'm gonna copy and paste and make another analytic here. This one's going to be click me to and or two. And we can make this one analytics video view, I don't know, button click. Analytics view and we'll call this one a secondary button click. Why not? A lot of times when you're triggering analytics, you want to track kind of screen time or when the user sees something and then when something disappears. So where you can call on appear, on appear, and we can trigger an analytic something like analytics manager log event. And we can say maybe analytics view appear. And then maybe we do the same thing on disappear, on disappear. And of course we change it to disappear. On one of these, we probably should send some parameters just to get an example out here. So I'm going to update this to the parameters completion. And then we'll add some maybe sample parameters here. Now it is important to note that the parameters are different from the user properties, right? So down here, if we add like analytics manager shared set user ID, I can set the user ID. And then we can also do analytics manager, analytics manager, shared must add user property let's do set user property and then maybe for user property let's do maybe like user is premium or something like that and then here i'll put true dot description so we make it a string we take a boolean make it a string it is important to note that the user properties are different from the parameters right the user properties is where we only have 25 that we are allowed to set so these are far and few between we pick the ones that are incredibly important but the difference is that these user properties are basically going to be parameters on every event that this user sets while these parameters are specific for this event. So if every single event we wanna know whether or not the user is premium or not, we should set it as a property. And then for like this event specific, if there's some extra data specific for this event, we would add that in the parameters here. So a parameter might be something that's like specific to the current screen the user's on or like the flow the funnel's in. Like if you were playing a game, it might be like, the user's on level 10 or we might add in here if we were a b testing the screen or something and we were changing the name of the button we might want to add in what the button title is as a parameter but for now let's keep it simple and we'll just do a screen title or something and we don't have a screen title but i'm just going to say hello world just as an example so we can get some data into the console cool and the last thing i'm going to point out here before we finish writing code for this video is that in the firebase analytics swift file package there actually is an analytic for screens in swift ui and so we can just call here analytics screen and pass in the name of the screen so the same way we're doing analytics view I can just pass in the screen name here. Class is like, I think a secondary name for the screen. I don't use it honestly, so I'm gonna delete it. And we also don't need any extra parameters here. Maybe if you had some screen settings, you would put them as your extra parameters on the, the screen here. Again, you don't have to use this, but it is kind of funny if you look into the docs of this screen, if we jump to definition, we can see in the Google SDK, right? It's literally, it's an extension of view, which we've done many times on my channel. We have a function called analytics screen, and then it's a modifier where if we jump to the modifier, 
it is literally just a string, a string, parameters. It is a view modifier, and they're calling on appear, and they're triggering the analytic on appear. I guess the main difference here is that in their analytic, they're using these specific parameter screen names, which probably have implications in the actual Google dashboard. So doing the Google Analytics event screen view is probably going to be more easily tracked than us doing a log event on a peer. So this is probably a better approach, but obviously we only have the one analytic for on a peer. So most of the time you're gonna be doing something like this anyway. Let's actually start sending some analytics now. So I'm gonna take this analytics view, I'm gonna make it the first screen in my app. And before we run it, let's get the debug going so that we can actually see some of the analytics that are triggering in a debug console. So what we're gonna do is come up here and click edit scheme. And we're gonna make sure that we have fire debug enabled checked and fire debug disabled not checked. Also, if you're gonna type this in right now, make sure you have this exactly as it is on my screen here with the dash and then fire debug enabled. While we're here, I'm gonna point out that the Google Docs are a little unclear on this. I mean, same with Stack Overflow, that if you go to the Get Started of Google Analytics, it says you need to turn on Fire Analytics Debug Enabled. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm gonna come back to Xcode here and add that as well. And then if we ever wanna turn that off, we also need to add Fire Analytics Debug Disabled. And then uncheck the Disabled, of course. So debug enabled, debug disabled, analytics debug enabled, analytics debug disabled. I'm gonna make sure the two enabled ones are checked and then close this. In their docs though, right? So it says fire analytics debug enabled here. And then if you go to the debug events tab, it tells you to use the other one with just the debug enabled. So a little confusing. I think we might actually need both. So it can't hurt, right? So we added both. And after that, let's command shift K to clean and rebuild just to make sure all those build settings are connected, our new, our new scheme here. And let's go ahead and build this to a simulator. All right, so we got our app launched here and I can see if I look in the console here, I can actually see some analytics coming out already. So the ones that look like this with these GA these are some of the default parameters that are just by default on the analytics. So I can see here, analytics view button click. So when I click on one of these, I can see that it actually fired. And then we can see the actual log of all the analytics sending out as well. If I come down here, so I can see some of my other ones. So I clicked on the secondary button click, that second button. I can literally see in real time that the parameter we added screen title is coming through, which is awesome. I can also jump in because we set the scheme for the fire debug analytics. I can now jump back into my Firebase console. And if we go to the analytics and we go to the debug view, that's this screen here, you can actually see in real time while you have the debug enabled, those, some of those events come through. So if I come up here and I actually start clicking buttons, I'm gonna click this first one like five times. I can see that the analytics are actually working. Give it a second. And I think it batches the analytics, so I clicked it a bunch, so it might come through in one big bunch. Yeah, there we go. Here it comes. All my button clicks. And what's cool is, obviously this analytic isn't very important, but if I click into it, I can actually see in real time here all of the parameters that are on the function. So I can see if I passed in, I think on the other one we passed in some custom parameters. Let's click that once. We can also see the user properties, right? So this user property by default, the first open time, that's the first time the user opened your app. It's one of the most important properties, honestly, for users because you can tell if they're a new user or an old user and that usually has a lot of implications. But here, yeah, here's the second one, the second button, and we can see our custom parameter screen title pop through here which is awesome. We got a nice little chart of some of the analytics in the last 30 minutes. This is great if you're trying to debug or you're trying to actually develop and add these analytics. So when you have this enabled, these analytics are not gonna actually go to the analytics dashboards. They're not gonna actually count towards your user analytics. So if you're just debugging or you're just developing, this is a good setup to be in. One of the cool things is also here it's by device. So if you and 
10 other people on your team are all debugging, you can just change which devices you're on. You don't get everyone's analytics on top of each other, which is nice. They're also giving us this nice timeline view here so we can see maybe the order that the analytics are fired in if that's important. This is all cool. I'm gonna go back to Xcode now and I'm going to turn off the analytics so we can actually send some to the actual console. So when you turn these off, you can't just uncheck enabled, you actually have to check disabled. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna uncheck this and check this one. I'm gonna close it. I'm going to Command Shift K to clean and rebuild yet again, just to make sure that those that scheme has been updated. And then I'm going to build to the simulator one more time. All right. And so if you build and run again, and you actually get the app to open, you fire analytics, they will send to the console. But unfortunately. In the documentation, it says the console takes, the actual analytics console takes up to 24 hours to update. So after you send analytics, you don't get them immediately. That's probably why they have the debug view for us. So we can debug to make sure they're working and then we don't actually have to wait for the actual events to occur. But I do have another project that I'll show you guys more or less the same analytics from another version I made before when I was creating this course. But basically, we'll first see users by app version, which is nice. Users in the last 30 minutes is exciting because you can see in real time your actual user base. So once you actually start getting a lot of users, they have this really cool map here. And obviously you can't see it because there's no one using this app that I have. But there'll be little blue dots all over the, the world here for your users. So you'll be able to see in real time where all the devices are coming from, which is like for me at least, it's really exciting because you know, you're know you on one part of the world and someone halfway across the world is using your app, which is pretty cool. And here we can actually start to see some breakdowns by audience, by the screen that they're on, by the event that they're on, and then conversions, which we'll talk about in a second, and then by user property. That's the real time dash, that's the real time dashboard. We also have the events dashboard here. The events are literally just a list of every event that you have sent to the console. So I don't have too many events here, but there's some that came by default, like first open, screen view, and there's some that we just added, right? Button, button click, analytics view appear. And so again, we can't really see this, but the percent change is pretty important. So once you actually start to put this into production, you'll see if more of this event or less of this event are happening, I think over the last, whatever your time period is. So there's little percentages that'll pop up here, which are like a nice quick way to know what is happening in your app. And we can also hear mark an event as a conversion. A conversion is basically, think of it like a super analytic. It's something that you're going to use as a key point of whether or not and a feature is successful or a flow is successful. So oftentimes you might have analytics that are sequential. So like if the user's in onboarding, right? You'll fire onboarding start, onboarding slide one, two, three, four, five. And then at the end, maybe it's like sign up and then onboarding complete. And so if you have that whole flow, that's a flow of users, but the conversion would be like that last event. And so you would then be able to start tracking how many users that started the event actually converted. And that's what this is saying, basically like which events do we wanna mark as conversion? Because not every event is going to be equally important, basically. Moving down here, I'm gonna also go to the conversions tab. And so the conversions are, again, those specific events that you mark as conversion. I think there is a limit on the number of conversions that you can have. I don't know what it is offhand, but you can add new conversion events, but personally, the way that I would do it is actually just send the events like we just saw in the events tab and then just mark them as conversion. This way, you know, it's the exact event. You're not kind of guessing because if you do it in here, you have to actually add the, the name of your event. And then if you trigger it with a different name, then it doesn't match up. Of course, we can also come in here and go to audiences. So under the analytics tab is the audiences tab which we're not gonna to do too much on, but this is, again, how you can segment your users. So we can click create a new audience. And then this is going to ask us basically like, so when your users are triggering events, how do you want to break them into different audience groups? And so a common one is like purchasers, users who are premium. You could do all users. You might wanna do 
all users who are in a specific country. You could do all users who are in basically any custom audience that you want. And so for example, we can click here, create a custom audience, and I might do all users who clicked that specific button. And now when I actually make charts, I'll be able to filter on all the users in this specific bucket. Again, when you're making audiences, you wanna think about user behavior. So the audience, you're trying to segment a specific section of users who might have specific behavior in your app. So for example, young users might have different behavior than old users, or users in the US might have different behavior than users in China, and things like that. You often wanna to try to segment these groups by their user profile. And that's why it's called audience, right? It's a group of users. And then you're gonna use that to actually look into your analytics. Moving on, we have custom definitions, which honestly, I don't really use. I don't know enough to really go into detail there. And then there's the latest release tab, which I've done in a previous video, I think. This is just once you release it, it's your basically your analytic statuses for your most recent release. One thing you probably noticed on all of these screens is of course that we can always view more in Google Analytics. So we're using Google Analytics through Google Firebase, but you don't have to. There are a lot of companies out there using Google Analytics as a tool by itself, not through Firebase. And so the Google Analytics platform is actually much more robust than just these dashboards that we are seeing here. So I'm gonna go into that real quick. Or again, we're not gonna do a deep dive in this video, but here we can see more or less the same dashboards, but we can go into a little bit greater detail. So I have my Firebase dashboard, there's an acquisition, an engagement and monetization dashboard. And this is kind of where a lot of those events that I was talking about earlier that Firebase wants us to include these specific event names. The reason for that is that all of these charts are going to be filled in by default if you use those correct event names. So that's kind of where that connection comes from. Obviously I don't have any data coming through here. We can see maybe my events, I have some events here. So for example, everything that we marked as a conversion would be on the conversions tab. So now I can like very isolated see which conversions are happening and which ones are not. One fun thing that they do have here, which I think is just interesting is over here is the insights button. And I think it's actually in the Firebase dashboard as well, the insights button. It's basically like some general questions that you might have based on your analytics. And honestly, if you're not taking a deep dive into analytics, all of your answers might be here. So for example, how many users did I have last week? What are my top screens? How many users are this year? It's like literally this simple. You just click the button and it tells you the answer. So again, if you're using those correct events, a lot of this data is going to be answered for you, which is kind of nice. All right, that's it for this video. We learned how to add analytics to our app. We did some button clicks. We logged some user properties. We set some user IDs. There again is so much in analytics that this one video doesn't do it justice. But I, if I were you guys, I would spend some time looking at your analytics, marking some things as conversion, figuring out how to maybe segment some audiences. And then after you have audiences, I would jump into the actual dashboards and try to create some charts that might actually be impactful for your business. All right, that was a general overview of analytics. I, I almost feel sorry that we didn't go more into detail here. There's just literally so much to unpack and not enough time. Thank you for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.